Um, I have been in the mortgage and real estate industry for 20 years. Um, I'm older than I look. You're all supposed to laugh when I say that. Um, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a realtor, which is why you got a prize. Um, my mom's best friend was a realtor, and I just thought she was the coolest chick in the world. She drove a Cadillac, she lived in a big house, she got to go around and walk in and out of all these people's houses all the time. She was pretty good at it. Um, so all the way through school, all the way through my life from five years old, I wanted to be a realtor. So when I got out of school, I went back to school and um, got my real estate license and started selling real estate in a town of 30,000 people, probably 50,000 in the county service area, and we had over 200 agents. So I know a little bit about a competitive market. Um, how did I get in mortgage? Well, I met this couple, and they were the greatest couple. They had three kids. They lived in a two-bedroom or three-bedroom brick ranch house in a really nice part of town, but it was too small for them. So when I met them, um, they said, well, we want a bigger house. And this was back in the 80s. Anybody been in the business since the 80s? Yeah. So, Judy, did we pre-qualify people in the 80s? I'm sorry? Did we pre-qualify people in the 80s? No. We didn't ask them, how's your credit? How's your income? We didn't, did we? I don't recall having applications for leasing property. Yeah, I didn't do any leasing. But, yeah, you didn't ask them. You didn't say, you need to go to my mortgage person first. Um, so anyway, this nice couple with these three kids, uh, I sold their house fast because it was in a great part of town. It was like the house to sell. And we sold it in like two days, full price. And then I took them out to find their new house, their dream home. And we found that too, right down the street from their old house. And then we had to go to the savings and loan to apply for the loan. And um, they didn't qualify for a mortgage. I'd already sold their house, so that was not good. <laughs> so lesson number one, make sure you get your people pre-qualified. It's perfectly normal now. Um, they had a bankruptcy and they didn't have enough money to put down, it's a long story. But anyway, so my dad was good friends with the vice president at Bank One. So I called him and I said, Bill, this is Bill's daughter, can you help me? I think I need to learn a little something about this mortgage stuff. So we started meeting for lunch um, every Tuesday. I would buy his lunch, which I thought was weird because I was the realtor and he was the mortgage person. It's usually flip-flopped. Uh, and he started teaching me about the, <clears throat> the mortgage process. And it, it was intriguing to me. I decided that I liked mortgage more, so I made the jump when I moved to Texas over to the mortgage side. So that's my story. Um, a little bit more to that story. Anybody remember the Great Recession? <laughs> the financial meltdown. Uh, well, I was a mortgage rep at the time. Loan officers were my customers. And you can imagine how tough it was to sell real estate. Some of you don't know because you weren't in the business, but Judy, was it easy to sell houses? Frank? <laughs> was it easy to get somebody pre-qualified? Probably wasn't very easy to help find financing either. So a lot of us mortgage professionals were displaced. And I started selling high-end advertising. So my biggest client, or my average client, would spend about $50,000 a month with my company. So obviously I didn't have any experience selling advertising and the company that I went to work for, it's an excellent company, um, they put me through this training program offered by AC Nielsen. Does anybody in here know who that is? It's the world's largest marketing and research firm. So they had this great training program because you can't send a rookie into a guy's office, a president or a CEO or a business owner, if they don't know what the heck they're selling or how it works. So the good news is when I came back to mortgage four years ago, I was able to take all that knowledge and roll it into this job. So I'm going to share with you today my $25,000 education from AC Nielsen. Is that good? All right, course objectives. So you're not used to the screen being all the way behind me. Okay, what we're going to learn today, we are going to learn the five elements to consider when doing a marketing campaign. You guys should always be targeting. Very rarely are you not going to be targeting in this business. There are five elements to every successful campaign. We're going to learn and talk about those in depth today. 
And I want you to also think about marketing. So marketing is not just a flyer. It's not a newspaper ad or a magazine ad. It's every time you open your mouth. There's a difference between marketing and advertising. So when you're thinking about your five elements, I want you to incorporate them in everything. In your, in your listings, the way you list them on HAR, in your flyers, in your direct mail, and in your conversations. We're also, this is the key right here, we're going to stop thinking like a realtor and we're going to start thinking like a buyer. When you're putting together your marketing, your advertising, you need to figure out what's going to entice that person to pick up the phone and call you or make a move. How to get more bang for your buck. These are just uh, some tips and tricks that you're going to learn that um, is going to make your advertising more effective. And then, of course, tips and tricks that major companies like McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, those were all my clients. John Moore, ABC Pass Pool and Lawn. Uh, things that they do every day to help make their advertising and their marketing more effective. Okay, any questions so far? Anybody disagree with anything yet? Still early, huh? All right, so let's jump right in. Tip number one, 65% of all people are visual. So that's more than 50%. Right? So right away, we know we have to have, here, let's just pass these around. Why don't you start those one row back. Right away, we know that we want to use pictures that are effective. So the tip is use pictures that are going to evoke an emotion from the person looking at the ad. Who in here uses their picture when marketing and advertising? Got your picture on your business card, on your website. That's fine. That's fine. Especially if you want to be recognized. I don't always want to be recognized, but I use my picture. The pictures that you want to use are not necessarily your picture or your logo, and yes, you need to use those too, but the main graphic should be what the customer would get if they use your services. Does that make sense? So. There are some postcards floating around the room, and they do not match the pictures here. <laughs> but they're just examples of what kind of visuals that we use at SWBC Mortgage. OK, so I need a volunteer. What do you see when you look at this picture? Anybody? You get prizes. They just, they just bought a home. What kind of an emotion do you see? Nice. Excitement? Good. What about this one? Yeah, or maybe thinking someday I'm going to put a crystal chandelier up there or let's paint that wall blue. What about the one here with the doggy? They did it. They did it? They Good. Did it. What about the top one? New couple. Young couple. First time home buyer. Yeah. So each of those pictures, they're all happy, right? But do they all evoke different kinds of emotions? They all say something a little different? So this is the kind of picture you want to use. Um, billboards. Who here has driven down 2920 or a country road? You guys know those billboards on the sides of the roads? Anybody know that agent standing there? And I love him. He's a really nice guy. Don't get me wrong. And I told him that I use him in this presentation. But he's standing there with his arm around his pretty wife. Do you know how much that billboard costs him every month? It's thousands of dollars. I told him, if you take that picture down and you put up a picture similar to this, you'll probably get more calls. He has still not changed it. Are you about the I'm not saying names. I'm not saying names, especially since you're recording. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying names. OK. Questions on that? I got a bunch <coughs> of stuff to give away here. <laughs> well, I've heard that too. I've heard that too. Pets are extremely effective. Um, who's the builder? Is it is it Brighton that uses the puppy dog on their billboards? 
this is a builder and they have a puppy dog on their billboards. And when I first saw it, I thought, well, that's a stupid ad. Why would you put a puppy dog if you're selling houses? But then I realized, I stopped and looked at it. I stared at it while I was stuck in traffic. Okay, so let's keep moving on. Okay, what works best? There are hundreds, thousands of different types of marketing. Okay, so what is the difference between marketing and advertising? It's just a slight difference. Marketing is the vehicle that you use to get your message out there, um, or the method that you use to get your message out there. Advertising is actually when you put it in print or on a billboard or into words, okay? So we've got all kinds of different kinds of advertising. We've got multi-channel marketing, we've got internet advertising, target marketing, we've got cause marketing, we've got mass marketing, lots of stuff, right? So how do you know what to do? Who in here, and we don't have a whole lot of experience in the room, but we have enough. Who in here has put an ad in a magazine before to sell real estate? I think your hand went up first. Did it work? Um, not to justify how much I spent. Okay. How long did you do it? Uh, about six months. About six months. Did you get anything off of it? Yes. Yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider that a successful marketing or advertising campaign? Thank you. Anybody? Oh, I missed. I'm not, I'm, I, I did not want to be a major league pitcher. Who in here has done a newspaper article or a newspaper ad? You can't go twice. Judy. <laughs> I've done several. Several, okay. And would you consider it successful? Uh, I don't think in today's time, <clears throat> Okay. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. When you did it before, was it effective? Not really. No. Well, it, it, it puts your face out there and your name out there. That's a Thank you for saying that. That is called branding. So. There's some bubbles for you. <laughs> that is called branding. We're going to talk about that too. So a couple things that are really popular in your business is mass marketing, which is where you just shoot it out there, think shotgun, okay? Hit whatever you can hit. Target marketing is more like using a rifle, okay? That's where you go in and you hone down and you look for tendencies and qualities that people have that would make them more likely to buy your product. Branding is also huge in your industry. Um, the problem is, most of you spend your entire budget branding yourselves rather than trying to generate leads. Now there's a difference. Branding yourself is probably A, not going to generate leads for you, or B, you won't know that that branding did it for you. Because they won't think, when you say, how did you hear about me? Oh, I've just heard your name. That's what branding does for you. And by the way, if you're not asking, oh, how did you hear about me when someone calls you, that's not good. Make sure you start doing that. Because then you can track what's more effective. Okay? So the problem is most of you are using all your marketing and advertising budget for branding, but that's more of a shotgun thing, right? So we're going to talk about exactly what a brand is. And I'm also going to tell you some ideas to actually use your dollars to make you money and make the phone ring. Real quick, while we're on this slide, cause marketing. Has anybody heard that term? Oh, I'm just <laughs> saving your lives today. Cause marketing is hot. It's huge. And it's huge with the millennials, who we're going to talk about a lot today. Millennials are Gen Y, Generation Y. Anybody heard that term? Echo Boomer, Millennial, Gen Y. They're all the same thing. There's some slight variations, but we're not going to worry about that. They're all the same thing. They're our next big buying segment. They're as big as the baby boomers, and about half of them are coming of age to where they would buy houses and make major purchases. So this is who we're going to be selling to for the next 10 years. And they love cause marketing. Cause marketing is where you donate a portion of your money back to a cause because they use your services. For instance, at SWBC, 
At SWBC, we donate a percentage of every deal we close, our commission goes back to the United Way. Now we don't advertise that, but if we did, it may actually attract more of that younger buyer for us. Questions so far? Comments? Any aha moments yet? Not yet? Man. Marketing by definition. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit already. Marketing definition is the process which creates, communicates, and delivers the value to the customer and maintains the relationship. Target marketing, I already explained that. Target marketing is more where you go in and you use a rifle. You look for specific tendencies or traits that people have. Come on in. Hi, are you staying? I'll give you a presentation. So target marketing is where you go in and um, look for tendencies that that person may have that would make them more likely to use your services. Branding we just talked about is, are there any questions on branding? So what we want to do is more mass and target marketing, specifically target marketing. Okay, questions so far? Comments? Quiet group. We gotta fix that. Okay, so here's our five elements. Remember when we first started, I said we were gonna talk about five elements to incorporate into every marketing and advertising piece that you do, including when you use your mouth. So the first is product. What is our product? What do we sell? Houses, Houses right? Good. We also sell our services, right? Um, market? Market is the person who is our buyer, most likely to buy our service. Package is the vehicle that you're gonna use in order to get your message out there. And offer is exactly what it sounds like. It's your call to action. Am I going too fast? Frequency, if you worked in our office and Debbie can vouch for this, frequency is the thing. If you're not gonna do anything, do frequency. Promise me, most people quit too soon. Frequency is the amount of time or the number of times that you're gonna put your message out there in order to reach your audience. Any questions? I got a couple writers, so we'll let them catch up. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. Okay. Product, okay, so let's dig into this a little bit. What in the heck is going on with my presentation? There we go. What do we sell? Houses. What else do we sell? Our services. Our services. <laughs> she didn't even like, she just sat there, she just throw it and hit her with it. <laughs> she didn't put her hands up. <laughs> okay, so we sell listings and we sell our services to buyers, our experience and our services to buyers, right? So those are basically, for this class, the two things that we sell. We also sell leases and all this other stuff, but today we're gonna talk about how to attract more buyers and how to attract more sellers. You're gonna learn a little bit about that in this presentation. What is going on here? All right, market. Who is most likely to buy our product? Well, the first thing we gotta do is determine what our product is. So you got a few thousand bucks or a few hundred bucks or 20 bucks and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do some marketing and advertising with this money. First thing you're gonna do is decide who, what service you wanna sell, because you sell multiple, right? So if you wanna attract leases, you need to incorporate language and visuals into that advertising that will attract leases. If you wanna attract listings, you need to incorporate language and visuals to attract listings. If you wanna sell a listing, what kind of visual can we use when we're selling a listing? You guys get this right 100% of the time. The house. The house, yay, thank you, Frank. Here you go, here's a chicken or a dinosaur or something. <laughs> 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 they light up too, like slam it on the desk or something. Look, they light up. Aren't those fun? <laughs> 
you'd be surprised how hard it is to find weird stuff like this that's inexpensive to give out in classes. Um, okay, so the other thing you're going to ask yourself when you're determining your market is where can you find them in the masses? And you want to be as specific as you can. That's the targeting part. So let's do an example. We're not going to do a listing because that's pretty obvious. Let's say we're trying to attract buyers. So our product would be what? What are we selling when we're trying to attract buyers? Our services. Okay. And then who is our market when we're trying to attract buyers? This one's so easy, it's hard. Buyers. Thank you. You're getting rich. <laughs> Package. So the package is the vehicle you're going to use, okay? So this is the actual method. Um, this is where you can get a little creative. So we're going to look for buyers, we decided, right? And how can we reach buyers? Well, this is part of the problem. So you got your big stack of cash, and you're going to spend it on marketing and advertising. And you figure this part out usually. You say, I want to attract more buyers, so I'm going to go put an ad in a magazine. Or I want to attract more buyers, so I'm going to go put my plaster my face on a grocery cart. You're not thinking deep enough. You're not thinking deep enough. You have to think about all five. So when you think buyers, what buyers? What kind of buyers? What kind of buyers are there? First time buyers. What other kinds are there? Investors. Investors. What else? Repeat buyers. Repeat buyers. What else? Buyers who want to buy up. Move up buyers. What else? Foreign nationals. Foreign nationals. Empty nesters. Retirees. Disabled people. Veterans. We could go on and on and on. Don't think buyers. Think about a specific kind of buyer. Okay, and then what we're going to do that's our market. Okay, everybody following me? So we're going to sell our services, which means we got to attract buyers. Our buyer we have segmented now. So let's say we're going to do empty nesters. Okay. So our packages, the method that we're going to use in order to get to them. How can we reach empty nesters? Where could we advertise or market where we would reach empty nesters in the masses? So where do old people hang out? <laughs> I keep forgetting he's taping. <laughs> Coffee shops. Think it through. Come on, let's throw some examples out there. <laughs> Louis, excellent. Church, old people's homes, doctor's offices, the country club because they can afford it. They're the only ones who can. Okay, so you got the idea? Offer. So the offer is the call to action. A couple things on offer. You always want to have this, and you want to get used to incorporating this into your language too. So our offer a lot of the times in the mortgage industry is, hey, no problem, um, happy to help. If you know anyone else that might be interested in buying or selling a home or financing or buying an investment property, have them give me a call. That's fine, let's try one for real estate. Um, if you know somebody interested in buying or selling a home, have them give me a call, right? Have them give me a call today, it's a really hot market, would be a much better call to action. So you need to have A, the call to action, you need to have a sense of urgency. I pace when I do this. <laughs> um, you need to have a sense of urgency. Who in here has used a coupon before? What does a coupon always have? Expiration. Oh, they, too many of them knew the answer. Why? Come in and use it. Now, quickly, yes. So we need to have that sense of urgency. What is our sense of urgency in today's market? Inventory is moving fast. You get bubbles? Inventory. <laughs> Here. <laughs> there you go. Inventory is moving fast, which means what? Or what does it mean if I'm selling? Why? Because the market's 
Because it's going to sell what? You get the most money for it right now. You're going to get a lot of money for your house right now. So let's go back. Product. Let's say that we're trying to attract listings because we all know we need more listings. We're like having an epidemic here. So who is our market? Sellers. Sellers, people that own a house. How can we reach them? They're pretty easy to find. <laughs> right? How can we reach them? Mailings. Mailings. Chicken. <laughs> We're going to run a prize this fast. How else? It's the thing you guys hate to do more than anything. Door, door. door knocking. What might we say to them? What would our offer be? We just covered this. It's a hot market, which means inventory's low, which means You'll sell really fast for a lot of money. There you go. So do you see now how this is marketing, not advertising? Does that make sense? Knock, knock, knock. Hi, I'm Tammy. I'm with Remax. Did you know there's an epidemic shortage of homes on the market in the Woodlands right now? We've got hundreds of thousands of people getting ready to move here, and they don't have any place to live. If you or someone on your street or someone you know is thinking about selling their house in the next, I don't know, six months, here's my card. Please give me a call. We can get you more money for your house in today's market than we can guarantee that we would get you tomorrow, and we're going to sell it really fast. What do you think the person would say? Cool. Thanks. I'm not looking. Slam. Oh, my husband and I are thinking about moving. By the way, you can do all of that on a flyer. You can do all of that on a postcard. You can do all of that in an email, right? It opens the door if they want to know what they can put their house in the market for and create that relationship. And believe me, I have been selling since I was five. I would hate to do that, too. I would hate to do that. There's got to be an easier way, which is another class. Are we bringing persuasive sales skills here? It's not on the calendar. Okay. Oh, well, we'll get it on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Frequency. <laughs> <laughs> the persuasive sales skills teaches you how to say what we just said by not saying it like that. Frequency. Okay. I got a hundred bucks for the first person who tells me, truthfully, that they have, and just to show hands, who here has been to the gym once and lost 20 pounds? Twice. Three times? I'm afraid to go past five, but let's go five. You never know. My husband could lose weight just by thinking about it. That's frequency. You cannot do something and spend your hard-earned money and do it once or twice or three times and expect it to work, depending on what it is, OK? But if you're going to put a magazine ad in the newcomer's guide, which I think is a great place to advertise right now, be prepared to pay for it and do it for probably six months to a year. Direct mail. I'm a huge believer in direct mail. Direct mail is still the highest return on your investment of any form of advertising, including internet advertising. Direct mail will make you more money based on how much you spend. That's called return on investment. That doesn't seem right, does it? That seems like, I'm surprised somebody didn't say it. Usually when there's a bigger crowd, somebody goes, that's not true. It is true. How much does it cost to do direct mail, Frank? Well, now, 17 and a half cents, up to maybe a buck, right? Maybe a buck 50, depending on where you do it or how you do it. Your method. <laughs> well, let's say it costs a buck 70. Where can you advertise on the internet for a buck 70? You can't, right? Internet's way more expensive. It probably has, it will give you more leads. By the way, it'll give you more junk, um, which doesn't mean it's a bad thing to do. Everybody should be advertising on the internet. But direct mail for the cost is more effective still to every generation. 
regardless of age. It's been tested by the world's largest marketing research firm two weeks ago. The answer was still the same. OK, so let's not get off track. Frequency. Frequency, depending on what your product is, you probably have to advertise it more if there's a smaller audience for it. Does that make sense? So who in here has had a million dollar home or a luxury home listing? Ever. Really? I can just <laughs> yeah. I'm like <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's say a luxury home. Maybe it doesn't have to be a million dollar home. Maybe it needs to be a $800,000 house. Okay. Did the $800,000 house, oh, has it sold? No, I need to know about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. Judy, have you ever had like a seven, $800,000 house for sale, yes. listed for sale? Yes. Did it sell as fast as say the $200,000 house? Why? Well, uh, because of the price. I mean, it, you have a different market. Right. Looking at that, in that price. And because fewer people can and afford it. Afford it. Yes. OK, so we have a smaller audience. So we're probably going to have to advertise that house longer and a little more because we've got fewer people that are able or interested in buying it. Does that make sense? We've got lots of people interested in buying $200,000 houses. That's why there's more of them. So frequency is something we're going to talk about a lot today. OK, the importance of frequency. I promise you that in the history of consumption, no one has ever purchased anything expensive, and expensive is a personal term, what's expensive to you may not be expensive to me and vice versa. No one has ever purchased anything expensive unless they were ready, willing, and able. See this little blue triangle down here? How many people in here have had that buyer call when they're on floor duty. I found this house. I've got to go see it right now. I want to go see it. Can you take me to see it right now? My husband and I need to buy a house right away. And you go, great. Have you been pre-qualified by a lender? Well, I'm working on it. OK. What's the holdup? Well, we got to improve our credit score a little bit. Is that person ready? Is that person willing? Is that person able? Yet to be determined, right? <laughs> so there may be here in this red triangle. Frank, you can be my volunteer. You're gonna be, you're gonna be part of my uh, part of my uh, example here. So Frank and I are both members of the chamber, and I'm a real estate agent, and Frank is not. And we both go to business after hours every month because we're networking and we're good little marketers. And I walk in the door, and I see Frank. And right now, he's thinking, oh my god, there's that realtor. Hide me. Get her away from me. She's going to come over here and ask me if I want to buy or sell a house, or if I know anybody that wants to buy or sell a house, and she drives me crazy. Which category is he in? The green one. He is not remotely interested, not willing, not able, not ready to talk to me. He doesn't want to talk to me. So he goes and hides behind a group of people. And then a couple months go by, <clears throat> and Frank has a son that lives in Europe. And he's been studying over there. And he calls, and he says, what, do you have a son? I do, but he's in New Jersey. Oh, well, that's not far enough. What's his name? Frank. Okay. Hi, Dad. This is Frankie. How are you today? I've got good news for you. I'm coming back to Texas. I'm coming back to the woodlands. And you get excited, right? Yeah. Great. But I have something to tell you. I got married, and I'm bringing my new bride with me. And she's, we're going to live with you. And she has three kids, and they're coming too. <laughs> so how many bedrooms do you have in your house? Four. Four. And how many people do you have living in your house right now? Three. And if you added five more, would that make it a little bit uncomfortable? So now we're at business after hours in the spring. And I walk in the door. Hi, Frank. <laughs> now when Frank sees me, he's maybe a little bit more interested in talking to me, right? So Frank might come up to me and say, so, and pay attention to this. Frank might come up to me and say, so what's the real estate market like? 
You guys ever get that question? Do you think people are just being polite when they ask it? They're not. They're not being polite. They actually have a little bit of an interest in it. Or they're trying to sell you something. Um, <laughs> Because you know you're supposed to build rapport by asking. So, yeah. um, so Frank wants to know maybe what the real estate market is like. And I'm going to say it is hot. It's hot, 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 hot. There's not enough houses to sell right now. Are you thinking about selling your house? Because if you're thinking about selling your house, I could sell it fast and I could get you a lot of money for it. Well, Frank's maybe not thinking about selling his house. So what did I just do? Turned him off. <laughs> But he is maybe thinking about buying an investment property to let his son and his new prefab family live in. So he wants to know a little bit about the market, wants to know what prices are like, how many houses are for sale. He's sticking his little toe in the water, right? Warming up to the idea, maybe online, doing a little bit of research, looking through a magazine, maybe picks up a home focus or a, what's the other one called? Real estate magazine. Yeah, so he's starting to maybe get a little nervous. Where's he at now? What color is he? He's red. Thank you. Wake up. All right, so <laughs> orange, red. Okay, I'll give cut you guys some slack. Okay, so now it's summer and I get to the business after hours chamber thing and I see Frank. Hi, Frank! And he comes running over to me, throws his arms around me, and says, oh my God, I've got to get an investment property. I need it now. I need it yesterday. My kid's coming, or my kid's here with his wife and three kids, and they're living in my four-bedroom house, and we're cramped, and we're bursting at the seams, and I can't work from home, and oh my God, can we go look at houses now? Frank's the guy that goes out, looks at two houses, makes a full price offer on the second one. Who's, ha who's had that happen? Who's had the couple that goes out and they look at 82 houses for 18 months and they still won't make up their freaking mind. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. That person is not ready, willing, and able. They are missing one of the three, at least one. And it's your job to figure out which one. So Tim, 